Three. Happy Earth Day. So excited to see you. I'm coming to you a little bit late today. I've received so many great pictures from Spirit Week. Keep them coming. I have spent a lot of times out, outdoors earlier today and around animals, so that's how I'm celebrating Earth Day. I'm wearing green today. It's about all I got as far as dressing up in this theme today. But I am going to be reading you a book today about the Earth. So this one's called Earth, My First 4.54 Billion Years. I mean, it's just kind of old. All right, let's celebrate the Earth today. Hi, my name is Earth, and some people call me Gaia, the world, the blue marble, or the third planet from the sun. But you can call me Planet Awesome. My family is really, really big. Happy holidays. There's their holiday card. <laughs> I have seven siblings in my solar system. I'm closest to Venus and Mars. Some used to say I have eight siblings, but Pluto is more like the family pet. And then there are my cousins. The Milky Way family has billions of planets. I told you, big family. My favorite things to do are spinning. It takes me a whole day to go around once. And I love circling the sun. That takes me an entire year. My best friend is the moon. We hang out all the time, even when you can't see her. The moon needs 27 days, 7 hours, and 43 minutes and 12 seconds to go around me. I've timed her. I was born 4.54 billion years ago. I don't remember what it was like to be a baby. Who does? But I've been told I was a hot mess. I was explosive, gassy, and very cranky. Like a baby earth. Just a billion years ago. Then I started to cool off and, got, and things got wet. Like really wet. It rained for thousands of years. I'm not kidding. Thousands. I was soggy and lonely and a few islands popped up in my oceans. No plants or animals, though. My islands must have been lonely, too. They got together and made bigger islands called consonants. Pangea. I remember your... I remember your and Nuna and the ginormous Pangea. Then Pangaea split into seven separate co continents. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, Antarctica. Things are always changing. As I got older, stuff began to grow. Life! And this is showing the different things that came around. 400, 400 million years ago, bugs came around. Before that, air, plants, 20, 240 million years ago, dinosaurs, <laughs> 210 million years ago, yay for animals, they're fuzzy and warm, 150 million years ago, birds, did you know they're relatives of dinosaurs, flowers, I'm pretty, I'm a very pretty planet, it's not bragging if it's true, and then homo sapiens, so humans, you humans have big brains and walk two feet. The time of the dinosaurs was one of my favorites. I mean, everyone loves dinosaurs. They lived with me for 175 million years. Until... Asteroid! Ah! Okay. Ah! That face. I love that. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's not always easy being Earth. The volcanic eruptions, ice ages, major collisions. Ooh. But on the inside, I'm the same planet awesome. Got the crust, the mantle, inner core, outer core. Gets pretty deep. Humans, yeah, they've been super fun. No other species have ever been interested in learning about me. Other animals... They're nice, but they mostly eat and poop and never wonder about my amazing life. Sometimes, 
Humans forget to share and play nice and clean up after themselves. Ooh, this is all the ways that we're affecting Earth negatively. Look at his face. No, we're fighting across a border here, hurting whales. Sometimes when you take a step back and see all that we're doing, it's just appalling. Still, I bet you humans will turn out to do really great things. We love you, Earth. I love that book as a way to celebrate Earth and remember that we need to take care of him. He's so funny and so nice. Got it? Or take care of her. I guess I don't know. We've got to love Earth, okay? All right. Now, I'm about to pop you over to a video recording of a tech tip, all right? Okay, today's video is gonna be kind of long, but I've gotta to get to Wild Robot. And while I was talking with um, Anna, Austin, and Lila, I started thinking about a really great idea. Um, we've got class meetings Thursday at one, but I'm still hearing that kids are missing their friends. So we've gotta find a way to find some smaller group time to just give you a chance to chat with one another. It's pretty hard to do on our big class meeting. So just like I pulled names, for compliments, I am now going to be pulling out four, yes, four names. These four names I pull out are going to join me on Monday at noon for a lunch bunch on Google Meet. I know it's not a lunch bunch in our classroom and we can't, you know, be silly and play games and watch videos together and have fun, but we can bring our lunch, sit down at Google Meet, and just share stories and talk and have a good time, completely informally. You guys ready for me to pull out four names? All right, Monday is our lunch bunch, okay? If I don't pull your name, there's one coming for you too, but you'll just have to wait a little longer. All right, four names, here we go. All right, on this first lunch bunch, I've got Ellie. Ellie's coming to the first lunch bunch. All right, so we got Ellie. Okay, next one. What does this one say? Lila. I wrote her name twice. <laughs> Lila's coming. So we got Ellie and Lila. Ah, hold on. They're kind of stuck to each other. I use post-its this time, not the brightest idea. Okay, here's our next one. Who's that? Abby! Yay! Okay, we got Ellie, Abby, Lila, and... Oh, I pulled out two. I'm pulling out five names today. So we got Ellie, Lila, Abby, and whoever these two are because they are both there. Liam and Austin. All right, I got five people, lunch bunch, Monday, Liam, Austin, Ellie, and, did I say Leela? That was one of my old students. Lila, Ellie, Abby, Liam, and Austin. Sorry if I fumbled up that name right there. Okay. So you guys are gonna get an invitation. Your parents will get an email invitation with your Google Meet Lunch Bunch on Monday at noon. And um, I'm also gonna send you guys a message on It's Learning with the Zoom link. So you won't need your parents' email to get the link. Your parents can get you the link from your email, but you can also get it on It's Learning at the time the meeting will start, Monday at 12. All right, looking forward to seeing you guys. Let's read Wild Robot. Now, Austin told me today in his um, conference that he's a little behind, so he's catching up. So if you are behind on Wild Robot, pause right here and go get caught up. Chapter 59, the spring. Dripping water, flowing water, splashing water. Winter's blanket of snow and ice was finally beginning to melt. White was fading away to expose the grays and browns that had been hidden underneath. Little green buds were appearing all over, 
Crowds of bright flowers were rising up from the dirt, and soon the island would be bursting with rich scents and colors. At long last, it was spring. The lodgers returned to their own homes. The hibernators emerged from their secret places. Roz roamed across the island and checked in with the beavers and the bears and all the friends she'd missed. Then the robot went back to work in her garden. After the bitterest, the bitterest winter anyone could recall, life was slowly returning to normal. You can see it all starting to melt, the waterfall happening. However, it was a quiet spring. There were fewer insects buzzing, fewer birds singing, fewer rodents rustling. Many creatures had frozen to death over the winter, and as the last of the snow melted away, their corpses were slowly revealed. The wilderness really can be ugly sometimes, but from that ugliness can come beauty. Oh no, it says, but from that ugliness came beauty. You see, those poor dead creatures returned to the earth. Their bodies nourished the soil, and they helped create the most dazzling spring bloom the island had ever known. Chapter 60, The Fish. Help, help, he's got my tail! Paddler was splashing and screaming in the pond. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver were nowhere to be seen, so Roz picked up a fallen tree branch and stomped into the shallows. Grab onto this! She said as she reached out with the branch. Paddler grabbed it with his big teeth, and the robot lifted him up out of the water. And if you don't remember... Oh, wait, no, Paddler's the little beaver. I was thinking Paddler was somebody different. And there, hanging from that young beaver's tail, was Rockmouth, the grumpy old pike. In one quick movement, Roz pulled in the branch and gripped the fish with her two hands. Paddler flopped into the water, where his parents suddenly appeared. What is wrong with you, Rockmouth? Mrs. Beaver dragged her son away. You've always been a nuisance, but this time you've gone too far. Do us all a favor, Roz, and toss him to the vultures. I cannot do that, said the robot, but I might be able to help. Remember, Roz can't be violent. Roz placed Rockmouth in a deep puddle near the pond where he couldn't swim away. Then she waited for the fish to explain himself. Fish aren't very talkative, especially grumpy fish like Rockmouth, but eventually he opened up to the robot, and before long, she was waving for the beavers to join them. He opened, I wonder what he opened up about. Rockmouth used to live in the river, said Roz as the beavers shuffled over, but you trapped him here when you built your dam. He's been angry about it ever since. Well, that doesn't give him the right to attack my son, hollered Mr. Beaver. It most certainly does not, hollered Mrs. Beaver. I'd be upset too, said Paddler softly. I'd hate to be kept away from my home. Mr. Rockmouth, you should have said something sooner. The fish looked up from the puddle with a frustrated expression that meant, I tried, but no one was listening. Well, the situation had to be remedied, and you can guess who rose to the occasion. Our girl, Roz. She was determined to get Rockmouth back to his home, and after she explored the nearby waterways, it became clear that she would have to carry the pike through the forest and across the great meadow to the nearest bend in the river. Um, I need a large container, said Roz to the beavers, something I can fill with water so Rockmouth can breathe while I carry him home. I could make it myself, but I thought you might like to help. It couldn't have been easy to overcome her anger with Rockmouth, but after Miss Beaver had a chance to cool off, she finally came around. I suppose we're partly to blame for this whole situation, she muttered. Then the beavers did the right thing, and together they carved out a wooden barrel for the fish. Here you go, Miss Beaver said, as she rolled the barrel over to the puddle where the robot and the fish were waiting. This should work nicely. Rockmouth, I hope you're happy back in the river. Rockmouth just flicked his tail in a way that meant Will someone please take me home now? Roz filled the barrel with water and a grumpy fish, and then they were off. She carried Rockmouth through the forest and across the meadow until she was standing on the river bank. Welcome home, said the robot. Then she tipped the barrel, and the fish plunked into the river. Rockmouth's face poked above the surface. He flashed a big toothy grin, and then he quickly swam away. Ooh, I can get... Two more chapters in. Chapter 61, The Robot Stories. 
The story of how Roz helped Rockmouth spread through the river and across the island, and it was soon followed by other robot stories. There were stories of Roz growing gardens in dry, barren places. There were stories of Roz nursing sick animals back to health. There were stories of Roz creating ropes and wheels and tools for helping her friends. But most of the new stories were about the robot's wildness. You see, Roz had noticed that the wilder she acted, the more the animals liked her. And so she barked with the foxes and sang with birds and hissed with snakes. She romped with weasels. She sunbathed with lizards. She leaped with the deer. That spring was a very wild time for our robot. Chapter 62. The Return. It was a quiet afternoon on the pond, but the quiet was gradually being overtaken by sounds not heard around there for many months. The sounds grew louder and louder, and then a flock of geese appeared above the trees. Honk, honk, honk. Most flocks of geese move lazily over the sky and trail off in wobbly lines, but not this one. This flock was fast. It flew in a perfect V formation, and it was led by a small graceful goose. The flock flew once around the pond where the flock flew once around the pond before gliding down and gently splashing into the water. The geese gathered in a tight group in the middle of the pond. They floated there for a while, softly honking to one another. And then the leader broke away from the others. He swam straight toward the nest, waddled into the garden, and fluttered up to his mother's shoulder. Welcome home, son, said Raz. It's good to be back, Ma, said Bright Bill. Yay, they're reunited. All right. Chapter 63 will be tomorrow, and um, we'll get to hear about his journey. And I hope we get some more of chit-chat here. We're getting close to the end, and I love chit-chat. All right. Have a great day. Happy Earth Day. Get outside.